Hi everyone, um, I was just going to briefly do another little video on the American Revolution. So I know that I mentioned in my email that we're going to have a quiz um, when we get back from break, well not break, from the snowstorm. Um, I'm thinking more like the second day back just so we can get back in the hang of things. Um, but I wanted to throw this video out here just in case you're reviewing at home and you're kind of forgetting everything we learned because um, it has been over five days um, since we've had a chance to talk about the revolution. Obviously, I'm not going to cover any new material um, that hasn't been covered in class in this video. I'm just going to talk you a little bit through um, where we started learning about the revolution and where we have made it thus far. Um, so I have my packet down below um, and I wanted to talk about, you know, what led us to this Revolutionary War. And so as a reminder, you'll hear me refer to it as the Revolution or the Revolutionary War. Um, so what got us here? Um, and you'll, you'll remember that we talked about the French and Indian War. And so we discussed in class that even though it's called the French and Indian War, it was not the French and the Indians fighting against each other. It was actually Great Britain and the French fighting against each other over land in the colonies. And most Indians fought with the French, but we did have Indians fighting on both sides. Now, to begin the war, the French started out really strong. Like, we thought the French were going to win. And... So our king at the time of Great Britain, he said, you know, I can't let them have the Indians and the French have our land. And therefore, I'm going to have to put some more money in this war. I'm going to have to make things happen. And so the king at the time, um, King George, started dumping all this money into the war. And we ended up, Great Britain ended up winning. Um, and we discussed in class how this was where George Washington got his military start. And we talked about that being important because George Washington's going to play an important role in our revolution, as we'll see. But this is where he really gets his military start and his military experience, which is going to be huge um, when we get actually to the revolution. Now, the revolution, uh, the French and Indian War, sorry, ends and King George comes up with the idea to tax the colonists. Now, we discussed that this idea came from the fact that King George spent a whole bunch of money on this war, and he needed a way to get his money back. So he set up all these acts, like the Stamp Act and the Tea Act and the Sugar Act, and he said you must buy, people in the colonies must buy their tea, sugar, stamps, whatever it may be, from England, and they are going to pay a tax on it. So that was the way that King George was going to make up his money. We know that taxes are money when, that we put forth when we pay for a product that goes, the portion that goes towards the government. And so we talked about how we have taxes here um, and how your parents may pay taxes to um, towards whatever it may be, and our school is actually funded by taxes. And so that was the main example we used as how are taxes used today, what exactly are taxes used for, and so the school was the one that we came up with, and how taxpayer money is used to fund all of our things that are going on in our school and the building itself, and so on and so forth. Um, so King George is putting all these taxes on us. We are not happy colonists. We do not want to pay taxes. And we've never really had to, as colonists, we've never had to pay taxes before. And so that's challenging. And it's it's almost irritating as a colonist to have to put out this money for things that you're used to getting. And so we have a whole bunch of colonists band together and they say, you know what? There's nobody representing us in the British government, which is also called parliament. There's no one representing us there, so we shouldn't have to pay taxes, and the local government should be in charge of rules and have legal authority over the colonies. And Great Britain said, no way. 
we have the right to tax you, and we have legal authority over the colonies. So Parliament, the British government, and the colonies were arguing over who has power, and it all stemmed from the taxes that came from the French and Indian War. So we're arguing back and forth, who has power to control the colonies, and who has the power to tax who? All right, so then we get to a point um, where in Boston, Massachusetts, a fight breaks out, and we have the death of five colonists and um, the wounding of six British shoulder soldiers. And this is known as the Boston Massacre. This is the first fight that actually breaks out between the two groups. It's an actual fight that breaks out um, over the conflict between taxes and legal authority. So they start fighting. Um, and this is just one little incident. Um, and then the next incident that we have is um, Great Britain ships um, three ships worth of tea into the Boston Harbor and the colonists say no um, a bunch of colonists dressed up as Indians and they went out and they threw 342 342 tons uh, not tons sorry chests of tea into the harbor so this was tea that was shipped there that had to be sold, paid for, and taxes had to be sent. But instead, it was thrown in the har thrown in the harbor. Well, this made Great Britain really mad. Um, and so we don't have that many things that we call a direct cause of the Revolutionary War, but we call the Boston Tea Party one of those direct causes because this is something that made Great Britain very angry. Um, so. We're back again where we're, we know war is about to break out, or war has, in a sense, broken out. Um, and, sorry, um, and the colonies have to come up with, they want their independ independence in the sense that they want legal authority and they want, they don't want to pay taxes to the British. So they have the first Continental Congress come and meet. So what happens is 12 representatives out of from 12 representatives from 12 of the colonies and then one person from a colony. So 12 out of the 13 colonies had a representative present and they had they held the meeting of the first Continental Congress in Philadelphia and they discussed all these things about legal authority and taxes and and what they could do about their situation. And so what they decided was they were going to write a letter to King King George. And they were going to talk about the rights and the freedoms that they thought they should have. Um, and so they wrote this whole letter to King George. And what did King George do? He didn't respond. Um, now, if you think about the dynamics of the situation, King George is the king of England. He's over here. Um, he's got lots of power. And we're in the colonies over here on the other side of the world. King George had enough legal authority and power at the time not to respond to that letter. Um, the first shots of the war took place in Concord, Massachusetts. Um, this was around 1775. Even after the first shots, um, our group met again, and this time we met as the Second Continental Congress in the colonies. And the Second Continental Congress is famous because that is where our Declaration of Independence was drafted. Um, and they wrote, of course, in the Declaration of Independence that the king kings were not rulers over the colonies and that every person was created equal and had the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that um, that document was adopted by the Continental Congress on July 4th, 1776, which is of course why we know Independence Day. So 
I just brain dumped a whole bunch of information on you um, about the Revolutionary War. Um, but that's everything that we've learned so far, and I was able to cover it in 10 minutes. Um, so you are more than welcome to reference back to this video um, as a study tool or, um, you know, for the test or for the quiz. Um, and you are more than welcome to reference this back when it comes to SOL time. And you have to remember, you're more than welcome to reference back to this video. Um, that's the purpose of me making this video. Um, so remember, this is what we have covered so far, and it's only a small portion of the story. Now... I want to be um, very specific for parents um, who are watching this video. I kind of told it in the we and I perspective um, because I think that the story is more, the, the history is more relatable when we can sort of make it a story for the students um, and they can kind of put themselves in those shoes. And so a lot of times when we're in class, I'll ask them to be the colonists. Um, and so that's where the we and I comes a lot into the story. Um, but those are the main things that we've covered so far. So, of course, if you have any questions, please just shoot me an email. And you are more than welcome to watch this video um, as a study tool. Um, and all of this is right in the first couple pages of your packet. All right. Bye.